Welcome to the Backyard Professor Responds videos. The response to my last video on this UFO UAP phenomena has been tremendous, at least from my channel's perspective, and I'm very grateful to all you new subscribers. Apparently, 400 of you have found my contribution valuable. For that, I'm very appreciative. If you wouldn't mind hitting the like, the subscribe, share the videos that I put out. Um, that would be very greatly appreciated. I do appreciate your support. I do have a PayPal if you'd like to contribute. You may also contribute, I do believe, through the Super Chats, I think, down in the comments. Anyway, um, let me let me explain just briefly a process that why I'm doing what I'm doing the way I'm doing it. And then I have some clips from Danny Sheehan that I want to share. Tonight's video is going to be much shorter than my almost three hour one the other night, which uh, is a very important backdrop to all of this. I'm new at this. I, I am not claiming to be an expert at all in this UFO UAP phenomenon. My background is more of the religious and yet I am a, uh, how would I label myself? An agnostic seeker. What I know best is the religious angle of pretty much anything and everything. And that sounds arrogant. I don't mean it that literally, but I my bias is going to try to see a spiritual aspect of materials that we cover. Okay, so, and this has always fascinated me. Now, in, in working my way through Brand new, brand new, and you must get this book, Imminent, by uh, Lou Elizondo. I'm going to read something off page 176 real quick with you, and then I'll get to the video clip of Dan Sheehan. I knew also that every professional has blind spots. When workers labor in silos and speak only to their team members, they develop tunnel vision. This wasn't just a government failing, it was global academics, scientists, politicians, experts the world over were guilty of the same thing. And that's why I want to share this clip with Danny Sheehan. And this is strictly my interpretation. What I need to do for my audience, what I am establishing to do is to demonstrate with the way I handle the materials that I'm commenting on is I need to establish a ground, a base of credibility. I need to demonstrate to my audience that I do use the experts, the real people, the ones who matter. We all matter. Don't get me wrong, please. But you know what I mean. Um, the Lou Alessandros and the Danny Sheehans, whom I'm going to comment, and uh, the Gary Nolans, whom I have done this video on now last night. I think that's being fair to you, my audience, so that you can know what to expect. I want to be credible as a go-to source for valid information. It's so unfortunate that in all of the fields of human endeavor, scholarship, and understanding, the UAP field is the worst for charlatanism. We all get that. I don't want to fall into that trap. Now, on the other hand, I am not saying you have to believe everything I say or those ideas of those whom I am giving commentary on either because it's not a scholarly consensus that is the goal here. The goal here is an investigation, as it were. We need to discuss the differences. And we know automatically right now, I mean, hundreds of my comments are sharing different interpretations, different views. No, you've got this wrong. What about this, etc. Some have called me ignorant now. Well, of course I'm ignorant. We're all ignorant on different levels, of course. But in hashing through this discussion, the theme, the goal is to prepare us for our future. 
and, and that's my whole impetus for all of this. So as I share commentary, this idea, the Elizondro, now he's taking it in the context of technology, a very valid context. I'm taking it out of its original context to make the point so that I can make this comment on Danny Sheehan's few comments in the couple of clips I'm going to share with you because there is not, and this is so ironic, there's nothing more fragile than the religious angle on this. Uh, time to put the naivete away. You know, we say, well, yeah, we have faith and we hope, well, we know our religion is true, etc. So it's not going to be affected by this. I, I personally believe that's quite naive. And yet it is the most, it is the strongest element with such a large segment of our society and not, not the same religion either. Here we in the West, we emphasize the Christianity. In the East, they've got the Buddhism, the Hinduism, the Shintoism, etc. So we are so sure in our religious beliefs, we are so positive in our testimonies that we have the truth and nothing can take us away from the truth. See, religion hates uncertainty, and so it wants us to believe certainty. We know the Bible is the Word of God. End of story. Anyone who brings forward any evidence that shows otherwise is branded as a heretic, or or we end up attacking them, etc. That's not what I'm trying to do here on my channel. I'm kind of fighting a double-edged sword in some respects. Since the religious background is my uh, lifelong pursuit, and so I'm not claiming expertise, but I'm claiming I could bring forward something very valuable to put on to the table of this discussion, regardless of what religion you are. And that's what I'm looking forward to doing, because I think that's the most vulnerable area, interestingly enough, within our own human psyches. And yet it is an area of great promise if we're religious. For those who aren't religious, we have great areas of promise grasping the material aspects, the scientific views, the enormous growth of excitement, yes, knowledge, yes, and yet some what trepidation because is this going to outdate our technology instantly if UAPs are discovered to be that much more advanced than we are and these suggestions are quite strong in that direction without question so this is an exploration this is not a final answer uh, if you want final answers you've come to the wrong place but we are going to have a fantastic discussion. I will have guests on my show. I promise I will try to get hold of many of these experts or those of you in my audience who have been studying this for 50 years, etc. I want to have this discussion. I'm in the discussion. I've invited myself to the table of the UAP UFO discussion. Here I am. We're going to get this thing going. And I am enthusiastic. I read well. I'm very blessed in that regard. And so, but I am new. So I'm going to grow, develop. I will, in light of new evidence, be changing my mind. And that goes for the religious, that goes for the scientific, that goes for the philosophical, that goes for the psychological, etc. We are, the key here is going to be flexibility, I think. That's how I'm going to attempt to transcend my human limitation. And I'm going to pass that on. So... Let's take a look at what Danny Sheehan is saying. Uh, not only is he a good lawyer, not only is this man a scientist, not, 
not, or at least he has studied the science incredibly in depth. Not only is he associated with so many very important foundations and political situations, he's quite a philosopher. And he has a religious streak. And what I mean by that is you need to talk to the religion of this phenomenon, Danny Sheehan can. And it's intriguing. And that's what I want to share with you tonight. So that's enough of an introduction. Ten minutes worth. Holy cow, I've lost nine-tenths of my audience. We So let's get going here. Uh, there's just a couple of ideas that Sheehan brings out that I thought is worth at least introducing you, my audience, to. This is just last year. This is not like 11 years ago. And the nice thing is, though, we have videos of Sheehan from that far back, and they are extremely valuable, too. So here we go. Let me make sure this is on. Yes, it is on. You know what? Let me try this. Uh, that helps enlarge it somewhat, yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's it's what you want to hear. Not, it doesn't matter what you see. No, no, no. You don't want to see me that big. Yeah, okay. Here we go. All right, enough goofing off. Let's go. Turn that up. Okay. Is that people have a general, genuine instinct that there's something theological about this. This has something to do with the entire makeup of the cosmos, the subtle energy realms that are operative in the universe, uh, and that life has been gestated elsewhere in the universe, many elsewheres. And so therefore, we in fact appear to have been gestated from the chemicals and stuff of our planet that we've been actually raised up from microbiology and our planet up into a high sentient beings and are in this, this teleological progression of ascending into higher and higher consciousness. There's so I just want to point out real briefly, if I could, he's, see, he's, he's trying to be scientifically accurate, and I very much appreciate that. He's trying to be religiously accurate, too. And, and I get it. There's going to be some, I mean, even in my audience, there, there are just some people that just do not like this angle. I get that. But it's going to be an angle that we have to handle anyway. It's going to be a ha it's going to be an aspect that we are going to have to tackle. I get it. The last since the new atheism, you know, a decade ago or so, this last decade has been pretty hard on organized religion. And it has. It's declined in a lot of spots, especially here in the United States of America. Not only has Mormonism stopped being the fastest growing religion in the world, as they used to love to tout as if that was a sign of their truthfulness. Boy, I remember those days. But even Christianity, Judaism, all of the organized religions have taken a solid hit thanks to the information brought out by the materialistic atheist slash scientists, etc. It's most unfortunate that this has also brought in a culture of shaming and mockery in far too many respects, even though I, I gotta confess, man, when you got hitch slapped by Christopher Hitchens, God, that was a beautiful thing. <laughs> and, and his religious opponents deserved it because of the stupidity of the religious argument they were presenting. I, I get all that. That's not what this is about. I'm not doing science versus religion, and neither is Sheehan. But I'm attempting to make you feel comfortable, even though you hate the subject of religion. It's going to be inevitable, man. Some of us have to man up and put our big boy pants on because this subject will be recurring nonstop as well as the subject of the science, the chemistry, etc. I'm, I'm just telling you.
it's inevitable. So let's keep going. He brings up a very interesting point here that I thought was well worth grasping. There seems to be some sort of tractor force that's operational, drawing us on up into a higher and higher degree of complexification. That's according to Tehard de Chardin. Tehard de Chardin was a Jesuit priest who was a paleontologist who actually discovered Peking man. Uh, and he wrote uh, many letters to his sister uh, talking about how he believed that all the evidence led him to believe that, in fact, we uh, human beings are ascending in this in progressive teleological way to be more and more conscious. Now, in this, this interfaces with a, an experience I had when, when I graduated from Harvard College in 1967. I went up to Harvard Law School uh, and I got notified in the spring of 1968 that uh, Professor Crane Brinton, who was the uh, longtime 25-year chairman of the Department of Intellectual History at Harvard University, was getting set to retire. Uh, now, I, I want to preface this, too, for those of you who haven't seen it. Um, this is the point I'm, I'm building up to, what this gentleman says. Uh, this is quite exciting because it involves a betterment of our humanity on an individual basis, hopefully, all of us. If not that, then at least on a, a species-wide basis, this is truly inevitable. And, and we like to, and, and largely in large part, See, this is the negative side of the religious angle here. We've got this Bible thing we like to always say, well, the Bible says, well, the Bible means, well, it's not in the Bible, so it's not accurate. Well, it is in the Bible, so it's law, etc., and etc. I get all that. We have been, we have either misguided ourselves or we have misunderstood the ancient records in such a way that we don't have the fuller picture. And that could be for myriads of reasons. I'm not going to worry about that tonight. I'll make other videos on these aspects of the religious issues, both good and bad. But our reliance on the Bible, in some respects, have hindered us from grasping a larger context. And I know there's going to be those who say, oh, dude, you've lost me. I'm, I'm even, you are just flipped out. Just bear with me. We'll get that from Danny Sheehan. There, there is a larger, more cosmological context here that these UAPs are forcing us to confront. I'm hoping assimilate and conquer, because if we don't, it's really bad for us. So let's keep going. I'm trying to be optimistic here. Sometimes you have to take two steps back to move forward a little bit, or one step back, two steps forward to make progress. Sometimes you have to let go of old biases. Uh, after 50 years of teaching at Harvard University, intellectual history, uh, and he was going to be giving his final lecture, uh, and he was asked to, to talk to the most important single intellectual insight that he thinks that uh, he has uncovered and encountered in his 50 years of studying intellectual history of our human family. And he gets up in front of the assemblage. They had to move it over to Lowell Hall because there were people came in from all around the country to be present for this lecture. And he gets up and he said, you know, I've been asked to talk about what the most important single intellectual insight uh, of our human family has been that I've encountered in 50 years of study. This is easy, he said. I think that all of the greatest minds of our human family have come to the, the common conclusion that our human family is right on the very brink of evolving into its next stage of development as a species. Uh, and that this next step in evolution is going to be manifested in terms of the evolution of a new faculty that our human beings have that is like seeing. 
or hearing that can directly, immediately, experientially encounter, much like we can through sight, the vibrational frequency of light and how we can directly experientially encounter the vibrational frequency of sounds, that we have a faculty that's evolving that is able to directly, immediately, experientially encounter the unitive phenomenon that bonds every single ultimately irreducible integer of matter in the entire physical universe into one unified harmonic whole. That is one you have to think about because this happening can be the greatest thing we get as a gift, as far as I'm concerned. So this has me on the edge of my seat of excitement, and yet we are also capable of blowing it. If we don't give ourselves a chance to exist longer as a species, and in some respects, if we're not careful, we are go well, not if, we have to be careful because we have to adjust our religion doctrinaire cocksureness of what we know to be the truth. That's dangerous. I'm coming from Mormonism. If you think your Christian belief in the Bible is any stronger and more solid than a Mormon believes in their testimony of Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon, you really are being naive. There is nobody more cocksure of themselves than a Mormon with a testimony. And the problem with this certainty, the problem with this, quote, knowledge, is more often than not, it dangerously shuts us off from further light and knowledge. You become complacent in your knowledge. And this brings a judgmental thinking and I. I am higher, I am better than thou, because the Holy Spirit has testified to me, and, and, and you are second rate. This, this nightmare has to be overcome. And I'm not trying to offend any Mormons, I'm not trying to offend any Christians. There's Let's get over the fact that we're not perfect in our religion and that the religion we believe in is not perfect either. It's not. All you have to do is look. It doesn't have to be, though. It doesn't. Yeah, I know. Don't get me on blast for me. We need to keep, perhaps it might help, just a suggestion. What I've been trying to do, and it's a process because I no longer believe in the faith I was raised in, but I consider myself an agnostic seeker. There is something more in the cosmos. So if you can, how can I put this? How to be flexible in the face of certainty. Yeah, that's a tough one, you know. The mathematics of the speed of light, E equals MC squared, utilizing the Lorentz transformation. I mean, I did this back several years ago on paper where I calculated out uh, the Lorentz transformation when you're traveling 10% the speed of light. And then the transformation at 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%, all the way up to 100%. You take a pen, you take a pen, and you zip this thing at 10% of the speed of light. The Lorentz transformation says it's going to shrink in the direction it's traveling. 
If you go halfway through the speed of light, as illustration, the pen shrinks to half its length, but it begins to weigh a lot more. The more you approach the speed of light, the less physical it is. At the speed of light, the pen would disappear and it would be energy. However, to get any material thing to the speed of light would take an infinite amount of energy. And that is why it's called the speed of light barrier, because there is an infinite energy in the universe. So we can never travel the speed of light. Remarkably fascinating, twiddling with the equations, we can manipulate it so that we come up with, and it's a scientific name, they're called tachyons, where mathematically on paper, we can manipulate the equations, and then we can make objects travel faster than the speed of light. They call those tachyons. There's a lot of, I've got several different books. Let me do a BYP idea on you here. I'm going to do a BYP thing on you on, yes, faster than the speed of light travel uh, by Maggio. Maggio. I, I apologize for mispronouncing his name. Another one's fun, time travel in Einstein's universe with the idea because time slows down also the closer you approach the speed of light. Not only does time slow down, but physical objects shorten, right? We've all heard this is physics 101 at this point. So anyway, this idea of faster than light travel and time travel. Here's another one on time travel. Here's another one by James Gleick on time travel. That was a fun one. So anyway, my <clears throat> physically speed of light's it done. No more. So how did the aliens get here if the closest star system, Alpha Centauri, is, is millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of years of time away from us at our conventional rocket speed, and yet it's it's the nearest neighbor we have, and it's just right over there. It, it's just it's real close in galactic terms. And there's ways around that. In my video yesterday on Gary Nolan, uh, he does discuss this somewhat. Very interesting. Go check that video out if you like. My point is, physically, at this point, we can't. We can't do it. And we are certain. That has nothing to do with whether the UAPs can do it. I mean... As Nolan properly pointed out, they potentially have had a few billion more years of time to develop evolutionarily, and they very easily could have discovered a way. On paper, with the equations, we can prove speed of light travel is possible. So there could be something there to discover. This is the idea. The flexibility, the realization that what we know with our knowledge is good. It serves us well as a species. We really enjoy learning new things. That's why Einstein was all the rage. He still is properly so. That's why quantum physics is so bubbly, weird, fascinating, because the ultra, ultra tiny is a realm unto itself, while the ultra, ultra gigantic huge is a separate realm unto itself, but it's all made of the same stuff. It's just that different laws of physics apply, or at least they can't Einstein's relativity cannot work properly in the quantum realm. 
So, sure, we have knowledge. Do we have all knowledge? Do we have certainty? Not by a long shot. So flexibility is called for. A willingness to say, I do have some knowledge, and it's really nice and fun, but would it freak us out if something came along knowledge-wise from an outside source that showed speed of light travel faster than that is entirely doable physically? Would that make us fly to pieces like glass because we want to remain in our own knowledge? Religion appears to me, I'm happy to be corrected if you think I'm full of it, but religion appears to me to be the one discipline that does try to keep things the same. It's it's ultra conservative. The stability this gives us is valuable. The difficulty of learning to improve an understanding so that we can have even greater light and knowledge is extremely difficult to get through religious channels. So let's keep watching what Sheehan says. This is really fascinating. And he said that by, by means of this experience, of this unitive experience, we are able to discern what conduct, human conduct, both individual and collective, is either harmonious with or disharmonious to the natural order of our universe. Now, quite frankly, I hope that's true. That that would be able to just stop all the ridiculous wars. That would help us grasp the better law of love one another. And it's so interesting because that was the emphasis in the Bible. And we like to have it as a placeholder, right? Uh, you know, Everyone has a Bible on the coffee table in the living room to show, well, why, yes, we're religious. We're not asking you to be religious anymore. That's not enough. We need a spirituality. We need an engagement of soul, not just a belief in it. Because crazy as it sounds, it's going to be love and I'm, I'm I'm trying, I swear to goodness, I'm not trying to be preachy here, you guys, but it is going to be love that propels us forward because love cooperates with one another. Mormons just are not going to let Jews into their temple any more than you Baptists, you Catholics, or your, you Jehovah's Witnesses, or you blasted atheists, or you scientific types. You have to think, believe, and act like a Mormon to get into their temples and do the work. See this us versus them. This exclusionary aspect of religion can become debilitating as a cooperative enterprise, which we as an entire whole humanity, we must inculcate within our lives in order to move forward. If we could get a, a new sight, you know, you hear the mystics talk about the third eye. You hear them talk about the chakra system with in the human body where you can have your own personal ascent through to the greater cosmological light and glory. This kind of sounds something similar along those lines to me. I'm for that. We don't know when that'll happen or whatever, but it's never going to happen. If we don't give ourselves the college try of attempting to just, it begins in our imagination, so we have to do it this way. Seriously, what would the world become just around us? Let's start small and simple baby steps. What would genuinely your world become around you if you really could forgive your neighbors 
and acquaintances and people you bump into during the day, whether you know them or not, and treat them like you wanted to be treated with respect, with kindness, with love. Really, with friendship. Instead of the road rage, oh, you son of a gun, flipping them the bird, and you pull out in front of me, and they stop and get out of their car and break out their wind. What is all this anger welling up within us for? I, I mean, are you really in that big of a hurry? For real? You know, we're suckers for the advertisement that we have to hurry up because we don't have enough time. When you have eternity, when you can see and feel the eternity and recognize that we're a part of that, then you can begin to calm down a little bit and stop and smell the dandelions. It's like the name of that book I've got over here. It's over here in the bookshelf somewhere. Don't sweat the small stuff. And the good news is, for real, it's all small stuff. So this is the upside of seeing this stuff as a spiritual basis. Or, or at least coupled with a spiritual basis. And I know the, the non-religious, and oh, they cringe. They say, no, 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 no. There's no good in religion. Look, the new atheists had their day, and they're full of it, with so much of their social commentary. Science and technology alone will not save us. It did not bring us into a paradise. We are on the freaking brink of extinction because we can't control our greed and control ourselves, and we have the machines enough to tear the earth apart trying to get rich. We only live to be, what, 70, 80 years old or whatever, and you ain't taking none of it with you. What is the point of getting filthy, flipping rich? You're going to die anyway. And you're destroying this gorgeous planet for what? See, if we can have a paradigm shift just a little bit of the time, you know, that's the key. So that's all I wanted to share with you. I've, I've gone on long enough. Uh, thank you for your, your wonderful comments, your love, your... Pre thank you for welcoming me into this UAP family exploration of a greater potential for all of us that will elevate all of us. And that's the optimistic side of me. Thank goodness I'm an eternal optimist. And that's how I'm looking at this. So thanks for watching my BYP Responds. I do appreciate it. Much more to come out as I as I run into it, as I read it in my texts, as I watch the YouTube channels, etc. I appreciate each and every one of you. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share the video. Thank you. Help me out. And I will in turn do my golly gosh darndest to give you Quality information, helpful information, fun information, and uh, something that makes your day. See you soon.